So I'm away from BookTube for a month and my comeback video is Excel spreadsheets and animated graphs. Cool. It's going to be fun. I, I'm excited for the graphs. Hey guys, my name is Angus and today I wanted to go through with you my reading stats for January 2021 and wrap up everything that I read. Um, this year I'm challenging myself to read 100 books, which I know for some people isn't a lot, but for me, I think the most that I've ever read in a year is like 50. So this is going to be a, a big jump for me. My reading fluctuates month to month. I thought it would be a good idea to try and keep me on track to do um, wrap ups where I analyze my stats for the month with some cool animated graphs and track my reading progress simply to help me track how I'm going and try and stay on track because I suck at staying on track with everything. Um, as you can probably tell by my fluctuating amount of YouTube videos. Anyway, today we'll be looking at everything from how many pages I read, the genres I read, the moods of books I read, um, my star ratings, and generally what kind of books I'm reading, the length. Um, I've made a bunch of really cool animated graphs, which I think are fun. I don't know if you guys are gonna enjoy them, but I think it looks cool. So stick around and it's gonna be fun. I, I'm excited for the graphs. Alrighty, so to start us off, I read eight books in January, which for me is a pretty good effort. Um, I yo-yo a lot with my reading, as I said, um, so I'm pretty proud of this. And as of February 1st, this puts me still on track for my reading goal. Altogether, I read 3,225 pages, which when I say that out loud, seems like quite a lot for me. So I'm pretty proud of that too. Of the eight books I read, 37% were non-fiction and 63% were fiction, which again, I'm happy with. Uh, this year, I definitely wanted to try and read more non-fiction, so this is a really good start for my year. My average star rating this month was 3.63. I read one two-star book, one 2.5-star book, two three-star books, one 3.5-star book, and three five-star books. <laughs> Everything was either average or excellent, apparently. <laughs> In terms of genre, there was quite a broad spectrum. My biggest three, however, were young adults, politics, and thrillers. This is, I mean, pretty predictable. I read two political memoirs, so that's probably why that one's so high. And also my go-to genres are young adult and thrillers. Looking at the page numbers, I typically chose to read books that were fast paced and 300 to 499 pages in length. 25% of the books I read were 500 pages plus, 63% were 300 to 499, and 12% were under 300 pages. Uh, Mood-wise, there was a pretty big mix this month, but the standouts were dark, reflective, and mysterious. And this is my monthly comparison graph. However, as it's only January, we don't have any other months to compare, so it's looking pretty bare at the moment, but I'll add to this as we go. Alrighty, so those were my stats for January 2021. Now I'm gonna go through and talk about all the books that I read. So the first book I read in January was White Ivy by Susie Yang. This is an adult fiction thriller, kind of. This is a talented Mr. Ripley-esque story about a young girl's obsession with her privileged classmates and the lengths she will go to, to essentially like, fake it till she makes it and claws her way into this rich family's life. It's a really interesting character study into like, these horribly self-absorbed characters living these really shallow lives. Um, it was really interesting to see Ivy become one of them through like, I guess osmosis. Like she just pretends to be them and then all of a sudden she's one of them. This book had a really strong narrative voice, especially for a debut author, but in the end, I was I was a little bit disappointed. Um, I really liked the writing style, but it just, I didn't like the direction the story went in. I feel like it fell flat about halfway through and ultimately I was finding myself getting a little bit bored and predicting the ending. So yeah, I gave this book three stars in the end. So I mean, it was fun, but I, I don't think I'll be recommending it to many people. It wasn't really my cup of tea. The next book I read was The Scholar by Dervil McTiernan, and this is book two in the Cormac Riley Detective Trilogy. And I feel like these books just get better and better as I go along, like this one was 10 times better than the first one and I absolutely loved the first one. So so hopefully the third one is just as good. This is probably the most fun. It's a lot more high stakes. It involves a hit and run at a university and a big pharmaceutical company trying to cover something up and it's just a lot of fun. If you don't know about the Cormac Riley detective books, I feel like they're so underrated. Um, especially on booktube. They're like really gritty, realistic crime novels set in Ireland and they're just such clever, well-crafted mysteries and so addictive to read. They're not too long either. So if you like crime, just 
give them a go. I would really recommend them. I absolutely love the main character's narrative voice and they're so well crafted and fun and addictive. Cozy crime with a bit of substance, which is hard to come by these days. So highly recommend. I get this one five stars. It's already on my list for my favorite books of this year. So <laughs> that's telling. The next book I read is None Shall Sleep by Ellie Marnie. This is like a gruesome Silence of the Lambs like YA thriller revolving around two teenage FBI agents who get caught up in a serial killer case. The description of this book promises so much, but in the end, I ultimately felt like this fell really flat. It honestly just felt like a mid-season episode of Dexter or Hannibal to me. There really wasn't anything special about this book. Like it was fun, but I just feel like I've seen this story on TV a million times. So I don't really know why it needed to be published. I don't know, the back promises so much more and it, it promises like almost like a horror, scary thriller book that you shouldn't read at night. But I don't know, I just, I just thought it was okay. <laughs> I, th I gave this on three stars, I think. Uh, it was just okay. Like I had fun, but didn't really see the point. <laughs> the next book I read, it's gonna be a hoot to talk about. Too Much and Never Enough by Marielle Trump. How My Family Created the World's Most Dangerous Man. Yes, this is the Trump niece expose book that came out last year that I stupidly decided to read. Um, it's so short. When you see a book this thin about a topic so big from a psychologist, I feel like that's a warning flag straight away. I don't know. It's it's pretty much like a personal expose on uh, Trump's upbringing and personal life. But honestly, 75% of this book feels like Mary Trump trying to redeem her late father who was treated really poorly by her family. I feel like this book is really falsely marketed. It's not really about Trump that much. Um, that just seems like a sticker they've stuck on at the end to try and sell this book better. So a bit tricky there, especially Mary Trump is a clinical psychologist with a PhD. So I expected some kind of psychological analysis of the president, but she didn't really give that to us. Um, there's some little glimpses of insight from her psychological background. In the end, I was really disappointed. Um, this feels more like a gossip column in a magazine than anything. Um, and I think I ended up giving this two stars. So d very disappointed. The next book I read was Felix Ever After by Case and Calendar and this was phenomenal. Um, uh, you've probably seen this all over booktube, so I won't go too much into it, but I'm just gonna say this is this is as good, if not better than what everyone's saying. Um, Felix Ever After pretty much deals with the transgender teens coming of age story, you know, discovering love for the first time and their place in the world. Um, it's just so beautifully written. And I just, I, I've never read anything like this before. So I just, <laughs> I ate this up. Um, I, this book, it will always hold a very special place in my heart. I think, I don't know what it was, but YA romance stories these days don't really phase me much, but this one, <sighs> my heart grew like three sizes while reading this. So I gave this five stars. It's on my favorite shelf. It was just, it was too good. Alrighty, the next book that I read, I nearly didn't read, but then decided to give it a chance. Um, Solutions and Other Problems by Ali Brosh. Back in like 2010 and 11, Ali Brosh ran this really successful, popular blogspot blog called Hyperbole and a Half. And me and my friends were obsessed with it. We ate it up and she published her first book, which was also called Hyperbole and a Half. And we loved it. But then she like disappeared from the internet for like nine, 10 years. Um, this is pretty much her coming back and explaining what happened while also giving us more of her blog comic style. It's a very unique art style and they're just, they were so funny to me when I was younger, but I definitely feel like I've grown out of them. It was really cool to read and there's some really hard hitting themes in here about kind of what went down between then and now, because a lot did, a lot of serious stuff. Um, and for that reason alone, I feel like I enjoyed this a little bit more than I would have if it was just purely another rehash of her blogs. But yeah, in the end, I gave this three stars. I feel like it wasn't as good as her first book, um, but at the same time, oof, I felt some stuff reading this. Alrighty, the next book I read was Amari and the Night Brothers by B.B. Alston. And I wasn't planning on picking this one up. I don't really read middle grade, but I received an advanced reading copy, so... I thought I'd give it a go. And oh my God, you guys, this was so good. This is like such a fun, original, fresh middle grade series that kind of blends Nevermore with Men in Black and Percy Jackson. It's a middle grade debut about a girl from the Rosewood Low Income Housing Projects, finding out that her missing brother is a part of a secret bureau of magical supernatural um, investigators. Um, and she gets whisked into this world and it's just so much fun. It's a little bit silly. It's got that real, 
fun, screen-worthy world building. And the rights for this have already been sold to Universal. So I think it's going to be a movie. This is book one in a series as well. I don't know how many books there are going to be, but I'm really, really interested to see where this goes. Um, definitely one to pick up. I gave this one five stars. And the last book that I read this month was <laughs> another Trump book. The Rumor It Happened by John Bolton. <laughs> this is a White House memoir from the former National Security Advisor during the Trump administration. He quit like halfway through because it was just insane, as you can imagine. But um, I stupidly picked it up thinking I might learn some stuff. But this book is just like John Bolton's resume, a very, very long one. Um, if, <laughs> if too much or never enough was not long enough, this one was too long. This was like just down to the microscopic detail of everything that John Bolton did during his time in the White House. And I understand that a lot of people would love that. But for me, I just, I didn't really know what I was getting myself into. And my God, these politicians are so full of themselves. Like he, Every, nothing John Bolton did was ever wrong. Like the whole book, he was just flawlessly executing his plans. Nothing went wrong. I, I guess that makes sense. It's a political book. Anyway, disappointed. I gave this one two and a half stars, I think. <sighs> I need to stick away from the Trump books. It was, it was too much. I've had enough for now. Ooh, okay, and those <clears throat> ah, are all the books that I read. Uh, this month in January. So it was a pretty good reading month for me. I, I'm not strong enough for this. Um, eight books. I, that's pretty good for me. I know it's not for a lot of other people, but for me, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. Hopefully I read more next month or the same at least because I'm on track for my reading goals. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Another video. Bye.